Okay, hi everyone. Um, in this video, we are going to talk about half-life or half-lives um, and sort of their applications um, a little bit briefly and um, their derivation, how you can find the half-life for any reaction as long as you know something about the kinetics. So half-life is the time that it takes half for half of the reaction, sorry, the time that it takes for half of a reactant within a reaction to be used up. So often we talk about half-life in terms of radioactivity, but we have to remember that radioactivity is really nothing but a reaction. It's just a dangerous reaction. And so any reaction has a half-life and it is however long it takes to reach the halfway point of using up a reactant. So that amount of time depends upon the rate law or the order of that reaction. Um, and, and, and with that, we are going to learn how not only does it re depend upon the order of the reaction, but it also depends upon the mechanism of the reaction. Because it turns out that the order of the reaction and the mechanism are attached to each other. And we are going to be working on that, that relationship in chapter 14. But for now, the key point is that this T1 half is the symbol that we use for half-life. So half-life is a time. And that time corresponds to the amount of dropping a reactant by half. Okay, so to figure out how to find the half-life or the time that is required, um, I'm going to go through the derivation as an example for a first order reaction. But this process of the derivation works for any order of the reaction. And um, I would encourage you to to work on a figuring out what the equation for the half-life is for a second order reaction. So to start off with, we start with the definition of half-life. So the definition is that at our T1 half, our concentration is equal to half the initial concentration. We also start, I like to start with the integrated rate law. You technically can start with the differential rate law, but really to work with it, you will ha want have to go from the differential to the integrated. So it usually works better to start with the integrated rate law. So in the first step, the first thing that I do is I combine these two expressions. And so I plug in 1 half A0 for the concentration of A at time T, and I, in, and I convert the t to t one half to to show that I am working with the half life. To go from here, this is a log rule. So remember that the natural log of a times b is the same thing as the natural log of a plus the natural log of b. And so all I did was I separated the one half and the initial concentration. So then we see, then I simplify. 
And I do that because I have a natural log of the initial concentration on both sides. So these cancel out. And then I rearrange. And to do that, what I have done is I have moved this negative sign, I have moved it inside of this natural log. So remember that I can move this, if I have negative natural log of A, this is equal to the natural log of A to the negative 1, which is equal to the natural log of 1 over A. And so I've used that same relationship here by moving that negative sign into the natural log so that I find that the half-life of a first order reaction, and remember that this is an elementary reaction, so that half-life, T1 half, is equal to the natural log of two divided by the rate constant. So the process of finding the expression for the half-life of any order of reaction is going to be the same thing. You're going to define the half-life, which is a, this is always the definition. You're going to plug that definition into the integrated rate law, and that needs to be the integrated rate law for the reaction that you're working with. And then you're going to play with the algebra and you're going to rearrange and simplify the expression so that you can get to something that isolates the T1 half to give you an expression for any order of reaction that you are working with.